Worried that uh, we'd only see the CEOs of tiny companies, people who we barely uh, want to talk to, uh, showing up amid this virus scare. But we do have one reasonably well-known name here, Mark Bristow, the boss of Barrick Gold. Mark, hi. Morning. You're going to be speaking at 9.35, but let me ask you, um, the coronavirus, it didn't deter you from coming? No, I think, uh, you know, I think it's a very serious situation and it needs to be managed. But um, you know, from our point of view, you know, we grew up, grew up in Africa. We've done uh, two Ebola epidemics. We, we're busy with the one still. And it's, uh, it's, it's actually important I share with the audience that actually yesterday was the 10th consecutive day we didn't have new infections in Ebola, which is a, a great achievement and show, shows that you can manage these crises if you do it, if you really plan for it. Because your Kibali mine, one of the crown jewels, is in the DRC. And, of course, we forget they've been wrestling with Ebola for years now. Yes, and, uh, and you know, that's, uh, I think that's what, what makes Barrick really more prepared than most because we've been through two, the West African uh, event and, and recently in uh, Eastern DRC. And so, you know, we've rolled that protocol. We, we've really got the protocols in place. And, and it's not only about managing people and access and knowing where they come from, but also uh, many, prepare, preparing for it, the uh, event of uh, somebody contracting the disease or arriving with the disease. And then on top of it, it's the logistics and being able to manage the logistics as the world wrestles with this, uh, with this crisis. Later today, um, Bob Friedland's going to be speaking. He has a huge mine in Congo, or a huge project in Congo. Um, tell me, you must have crossed paths with Robert Friedland over the years. Certainly I have, yeah. Of course I have, from the very beginning. <laughs> what, uh, have, you, have, you ever, have you ever struck a deal with him? Uh, way back in uh, my early days in South Africa, we actually, uh, in the Rand Mines days, we, I think uh, we, we did a deal where he, we vended some expiration rights into his platinum... Uh, project up in the northern part of South Africa, yes. One other speaker, and Bob Friedland's up around 11.35 a.m. Eastern Time today. You're up at 9.35 a.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for giving us this time, by the way. Um, what's your main message going to be to the crowd? So, you know, the, the, the big problem is this whole wrestling with uh, the mining industry, its relevance uh, and its importance in the future, and, and, of course, balancing that against ESG. And most importantly today, my message is, you know, to create value in the mining industry, you really have to invest in geologists and exploration because we're running out of uh, runway in our industry because we haven't invested in exploration. And we, whether it's copper or, or gold or, or any of the base metals, we're, we're struggling with uh, the reserve profile looking ahead. Let me raise a tricky one with you. The boss of Pretium is also speaking in this room later. They have a huge mine in BC. Their latest results disappointed investors. What have you said? Is Pretium the type of mine that you might buy? Well, I think the, what, what you're seeing there is what you often see in the mining industry is that, you know, the, that project's been tripped up by itself a number of times. And it's the importance of feasibility study studies and getting the numbers right. And, you know, I think the whole, the whole industry is sort of apprehensive about that project and, and where that can get back on track. And so, of course, we look at it and, uh, you know, along, along with the other opportunities that we, we have at our disposal. One thing I'm curious about the mining industry that you don't seem to get that out, the artisanal mining, the, the mining run by organized gangs in some parts of the world, that can be far more damaging than regulated mining by the big companies. Yeah, I think that's uh, people, that's not, you know, we, there is artisanal mining and we support that and it's traditional. What you're referring to is illegal mining, right. which is very destructive. It's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's abusive and it's, uh, as far as labor goes, it, it uses child labor often. And, and as you say, it supports, you know, unsavory activity in many parts of the emerging world. So, again, it's a big responsibility that the mining industry has to deal with along and in partnership with host countries. And I think we all owe it to ourselves. We worry about ESG, we worry about the environment, but we neglect the, the damage that the, this sort of activity uh, does, both to the national asset and also to... Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the abuse of young people and children. Mark, thank you very much indeed for giving us the time. Thank you. Mark Bristow, the CEO of Barrick Gold, back to you.